The Hinduism unit consists of five videos. You can watch them in any order you want, just make sure to watch all five of them. This particular video deals with the idea of one reality and 330 million gods. Hinduism is known for its dizzying array of deities. Some of them are very old, some of them seem to have come along very recently. The traditional number is that there are 330 million of these. 330 million distinct figures. There aren't really 330 million that you can count. You'll be lucky to find a little over a thousand. But the 330 million represents the idea that it's an endless process. It's almost like infinite, infinity. So the one reality and the 330 million figures are connected in this. The one reality is manifested in 330 million different ways. In other words, these aren't standalone deities. These are manifestations or moments of a single reality. You can think of this as a diamond with 330 million facets. Each one of them a, a different look at the ultimate reality, but no one of them by themselves gives you that picture. You can think of it as a mansion that you go to take a look at. Maybe you're thinking of buying a $30 million mansion, and you walk around the building and you can't get in, so you can peek in the windows. And every window you peek into gives you a little sense of something about that mansion. But no window can give you the fullness of the experience of that mansion. Or you can think of it as a god with 330 million hooks. That might be a better way to do this. If you need certain things in your life, you want wisdom, you want good fortune, you want wealth. If you need something like this, there's a hook for that. There's a hook for this. And there's a hook for that. Nobody needs all 330 million hooks. But there are plenty of hooks out there for you to run through your life so that the one reality becomes present for you in making your life meaningful. Let's go over some of those. And the first three to focus on are the most famous of them all. There's Lord Brahma, Lord Vishnu, and Lord Shiva, oftentimes called the Trimurti, the three faces, the three manifestations. They're not the only three, but they're the big three. Here's a, a little statue I got of Lord Brahma. You'll notice that he has four faces. That reflects the idea that there are four Vedas, but there's also a story about him um, getting a bit lusty after a particular woman and popping a new face every time she went around the corner so he could see her. At any rate, this is his representation. Lord Shiva is usually noted in the picture of the Nataraj, the cosmic dance, where there's a circle of flame and he's dancing with his four arms and he's just a dancing on the world, the destruction of the world. He's the cosmic destroyer. Brahma creates, Shiva destroys. And Vishnu is the one that provides the legal process of the whole thing. Vishnu is the one that provides the structure and maintains this thing from the beginning to the end. So the three work together. Truth told, nobody worships all three of them. That's just a cool way to talk about in a world religions textbook. And yes, Hindus might say, yeah, 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 we all get along. Look, we're all part of the same three. But Brahma hardly plays a role anymore. Oh, maybe 2,000 years ago he's a big deal, but not now. Instead, a whole lot of other figures play a key role. So, for instance, there is Lord Ganesh. Ganesh is Shiva's son. And Shiva goes off on a trip one day, comes back to see his wife, Parvati. And standing there at the door is the kid, his kid, who says, you can't go in. And Shiva says, who are you to tell me I can't go in? It's my wife. And he says, because she's taken a bath and she told me, don't let anybody in. And Shiva says, move out of the way, boy. And the boy says, no, mom said. And at that point, Shiva takes out his sword and chops off his son's head. Not a good fatherly thing to do. And Lord Brahma comes along and he says, what the heck you just do? And Shiva says, well, he was in my way. And Brahma says, get him a new head. So Shiva goes stomping off and he finds an elephant, chops off its head and brings it back and gives it to the kid. And now Ganesh is born. In history, Ganesh does not date back thousands of years, but he is today one of Hinduism's favorite gods. He's the god of good fortune. You don't start anything, whether it's a new business, a new marriage, or, or buy a new car, without first celebrating Lord Ganesh. He's a happy little guy. You know what's fun about him? 
Big elephant god rides a mouse. That's how he gets around. So there's a variety of gods and goddesses for everything. There's Sarsvati. She's a goddess. There are also Parvati. There's also Lakshmi. There are goddesses like Kali, the black skin, and I don't mean African black. What I mean is black, like ink black skin, and bloody lips and a, and a necklace made of human skulls. She's the goddess of death. But the other side of her is Gwara, who's a goddess of beauty and sexuality. So Hinduism has a different god or figure for all kinds of things. Some of them are forgotten, for the most part like Indra, or Rudra, or Agni. Agni would be the god of fire. He was really important when you were doing sacrifices, so you had to invoke him, because without a fire you can't do much of a sacrifice. But as sacrifices waned, Agni sort of falls into the wayside. And there's Varuna, the goddess of the moon and all. The rivers themselves, the sacred rivers, like the Ganges River, the Ganges is the body of the goddess Ganga. As I said, the array is dizzying. The simple truth is that nobody holds on to all of them, although I do know a guy, an Indian guy, who travels back to India. He's, he's about my age, and every time he comes back from India, he has new little figures, like these that I just showed you, for his home shrine. His home shrine knocks your eyes out. You walk into a room, and it's all the way around the room. It's not one little table. You see over my shoulder, I have a shrine here. No, it's not like that. It's all around the room, and he's got figures all over the place. It's like collecting action figures. But each one represents a different aspect of the ultimate reality. That'll do it for now.